Welcome back to another episode of the Play Hard, Look Dope podcast with your host, Ebony. And John. Today, we are so excited because we have former NBA, Brooklyn-born NBA player Smush with us here today. Welcome to the show. Smush Parker. (laughs) Smush Parker, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourselves? Good. I'm excited to have you on the show. I'm excited to be here. So much. I, I love that you're representing Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. I have to. It's like flipped up. <laughs> I, I love to. that. I absolutely love that. Um, tell us a little bit about what teams you played for. Give us some stats and some facts about you really okay. quick. Uh, so I'll work backwards. You know, I played overseas for 11 years. Mm-hmm. Um, played in China, Russia, Croatia, Lebanon, Dominic, Dominican Republic, uh, Mongolia, Tunisia, Morocco. Um, Damn. After, yeah. I played overseas for 11 years. Um, played in the NBA for six. I played for teams like the Cleveland Cavaliers, Detroit Pistons, Phoenix Suns, um, LA Lakers, LA Clippers, and the Miami Heat. Wow. Wow. How many languages do you speak? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't anywhere long enough to actually fully learn a language, but I did get the, you know, the basics, the thank yous, the excuse me, the good morning, the, um, Good nights. Yeah, how to just communicate yeah. on a basic yeah. level with bathrooms, the people around you. Yeah, exactly. Knowing where the bathroom is key. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> wow. That's, I mean, I'm kind of blown away. No, that right is now. unbelievable. How long did your career span in the NBA? So I was in the NBA for six years before I decided to leave. Ooh. Ooh. Before I decided to travel the world. Oh, yeah. wow. We're, we have to get into that. Yeah. yeah. Why, don't, why don't we go back and you tell us how you got yeah, into the NBA. Yeah, tell us about your childhood. Okay. So I was, I actually tell people all the time I was born with a basketball. My mom played basketball. My dad played basketball. I was always around the game of basketball. And, um, you know, even when I was, you know, too big to actually dribble or shoot, I was always, you know, playing with it. Yeah. And um, as I got older, you know, I got my little nerf set. No, oh, I remember puff basketball. Exactly. The nerf balls. Yeah. I know what yeah. those I are. could dunk on yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then I was I was the uh the true old school uh basketball player. I used to uh make basketball hoops out of hangers, wire hangers and put them up in my door. And I used to shoot with socks. I actually I can't even picture that. Yeah, like, totally. You know, like really? you just ra- you you round out the uh, a wire hanger. Yeah. Put it at the top of the door. Get out. And I used to r- roll my socks up. You love basketball. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So I, I, I was born with a basketball player my entire life, um, all over New York City. Mm, okay. Did you play in West 4th? I was born at West 4th Street. That Damn. Was, that was my crib growing up. So if you don't know, that is like the hardcore basketball mm-hmm. of, if not New York, the United States. Yeah. That's the- How do you get into that? Do you just walk onto the court and they let you play? Oh, or? no. Back in the day, if, if they didn't know, you wasn't allowed into the court. Like it's, Get out. Uh, it was a it was a community center pretty much. Oh. I call I call it West Fourth Street Community Center, because okay. all the guys there played that played there back in the eighties and nineties were family. Mm. They they all became my uncles. You know when my dad played, you know the guys who were waiting to play next would watch me. They would hold me as a baby. They would take care of me. Oh, so you got into that because your dad. Exactly. Right, yes. okay. Yes. And now you're playing there. Are you good or what's going on? Well, no. Uh, you, you don't uh, just, you're not born good. You have right. to, you know, you have to practice and work. Um, and I practice every day. I played every day. I loved the sport of basketball. So I played it 24 and, hours a day, seven days a week. In West 4th? Uh, yeah. Or you varied? At West 4th Street, you know, Tillery Park uh, in Brooklyn, uh, the uh, parade grounds in Brooklyn, you know, where, wherever my dad played basketball, I was with him everywhere he went. If he was going to play, I was with him. I was his sidekick. Oh, I was so his sidekick. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I was a student of the game before I actually was a player of the game. What did you love about the game of basketball so young? I don't know. I, I really can't, can't, can't tell you what it was that I liked or loved about it. It was just, 
well, something that I did. It's probably because the, your parents loved it, so yeah. naturally, yeah, you had an affinity. It was yeah. just like in your blood. Yeah, yeah. it was in my DNA. Mm. So I practiced, and and I, you know, I got older. Those guys beat me up. They made me tough. And how, how how old were you when you played your first game at West Fourth? Uh, that's a good question. The first time I was able to get on the main court. Uh, West Fourth Street, because there's yeah, there's a main court and then there's the the, the scrub court. Oh, I didn't even know that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, the first time I was able to get on the main court, I think I was about fifteen and a half. Okay. And uh, it was, of course, after prime time hours, when uh, you know the prime time players already got their five, six, seven, eight, nine games in, then they would leave the court, and the 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 B squad would come okay. in and I was able to play with them until I was about 16, 16 and a half. But then I, you know, was good enough to play with the, the prime time guys. At what age could you dunk? 16. <laughs> no shit. 16, yes. 16? Yes. It took you one year. 16. Wow. Two-handed. Uh, no, not two hands. Not one hand. Yeah, one one is hand. that harder? Hand. Yeah, you got to yeah. jump higher. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay, okay. So you're dunking at 16 on guys in West Fourth who are like in their 20s. and. No, 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 no. no. Don't misquote me. I'm not saying I, <laughs> I wasn't dunking on people at 16. <laughs> on, on, on adults. I wasn't dunking on adults at 16. Maybe kids my own age. Okay. You know, because the physicality of the game is different. You know, yeah. those, those men down there would have let me just come down the, the lane and just dunk it on them. What would they have done? Oh, put me into the fence, you know, hit me with a, a Charles Oakley elbow. Oh, <laughs> or Mason elbow. Yeah, exactly. So it, was playing at West Fourth not the same as in even high school or the college or the no. league? It was a lot more rough? Yes. Yeah, so okay. playing any street ball... It's gonna be a lot more physical than uh, a league game with officials. With officials. With officials. In West Fourth. No, no. 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 Okay. No. Okay. So street ball is a lot Physi more physical. It's a physical. Okay. It's a physical game. More physical game than it is when you're playing with officials. So referees. Referees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. So in West Fourth. Yeah. Like if you and I are playing, mm -hmm. I would call a foul on you if I wanted to call a foul. Yeah. So I would not do that because I'd be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So everyone's just playing, correct? Yeah, everybody's just playing just basketball. Playing. And, uh, you know, and the difference between street ball and uh, playing organized ball, that was the word I was looking for. Organized ball is in the street, there's no, there's no law. There's not, nothing that say, okay, I'm 13 years old, so I have to play against another 13-year-old. I'm a, you know, in the street, I'm playing, I'm from 13, I'm playing against whoever's in the park playing. Just Grown men, 40 matter. years old, right. 25, 18. So I'm <laughs> playing against men at 15, 16 years old. And they're playing like for real, for yeah, real? For, yeah, yeah. For real. And, and these guys would all get fouled out if they were refs. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> you go yeah. down, bam. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think was the point of that? Was it just because it was street ball or did it, was there any history in playing that rough no it's just that's just the uh street that's just, that's street, just ball. street style yeah, yeah. that's yeah. and and do you think that helped your nba career oh no question um like i said um when you're in the street there's no rules that say okay when you're playing there's another you have to play against a team that's also 13 years old or 14 years old so at 15 oh, 16 yeah. years old when i was when i was playing out in the street i was playing against men who are a lot stronger physically mm -hmm. who are a lot you know, uh, more they're, they're more talented, a lot faster. So I had to develop a certain toughness to play against those guys. So by the time I played in my own my own age group, I was a lot better than they were at 13, 14 years old, 15, because I was playing against men. So when I played against them, it was so much easier. Do you, Do you think that helped both mentally and physically? Oh, without a doubt, especially playing at West Fourth Street. Especially playing that way. There's no, there's no other environment in New York City like West Fourth Street. You can go to any other park right now, and you won't see the same kind of basketball at West Fourth Street. I agree. Sometimes, like in the summer, when I get out of the train there, because mm -hmm. our store is on the on the east side, but I would get out of the train there, and I would see a crowd of people, mm -hmm. yeah. and just like people walking would stop the screaming. There's yeah. like refs in like uniforms. Uh -huh. And I'm like, this is a real 
fucking game right now. Yeah, no, totally. And yeah. I'm like, you just see like cut up t-shirts and the it's the vibe is <clears throat> so raw. Yeah, yeah. It, was that a time for you that you were thinking about the NBA then, or were you just having a good time playing? Both in West Forth. Okay. Both. Both. So I didn't. Uh, I I didn't grow up thinking I wanted to play in the, in the NBA. I enjoyed watching the NBA. Never did I have a a, a, a mindset to, in, in my mind saying I want to go to the NBA. I just love playing basketball and I love watching basketball. I just love the game of basketball. It wasn't until I'm going to say when was it that I was like, you know what? I want to be an NBA player. Okay, I'm gonna say when I was 13, I'll give you the story. Really? Yeah, tell I'm, us I'm, the story. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna give you the story. So, I, like I told you, I was born with the basketball. I played basketball my entire life. So, one through 12, age one through 12, I was just playing basketball. Uh, when I was 13, I moved to Manhattan. Moved to Manhattan, got a chance to play in you know, all these New York City uh, Manhattan parks at West 4th Street. Anthony Mason. Was playing. No, Anthony Mason was playing in a championship game. I love that Anthony <laughs> at West Fourth Street, and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching an NBA player now. Wow, a New York Nick playing in the park. I have chills. I know. Playing I know in the park where I grew up, just you know, playing basketball every day, and I could see the excitement of everybody. Everybody was excited because there was an NBA player there, and I was excited because it was good basketball. The environment was, you know, um, very intense. And I was like, that's when it, I was like, I want to play in the NBA. And from that point, that day on, I was like, you know what? I want to be an NBA player. Shit. It was that day that I, I saw Anthony Mason, Anthony Mason playing in, in West Unbelievable. Washington. That's amazing. <laughs> I, so then I what, you go to excited. college? Where'd you go to college? Um, yeah. So um, from high school, I played one year of high school basketball. Um, Unfortunately, I didn't take school seriously, you know, so I was Neither did I. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't eligible to play on my high school's teams, you know, freshman, junior, uh, sophomore year. I said it in the wrong order, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I played, <laughs> I don't want people to chat, like, yo, Swish doesn't know what he's talking about. That's the order it should go in. Huh? That's the order it should go yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it should go. <laughs> yeah. But I played my senior year. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I didn't have the grades to go to a university right away, so I went to junior college. Went to junior college in Idaho. Played in Idaho. Idaho. Yeah, Idaho. Yo. What is yes. that like? like Lots of corn, potatoes? Get off the, right, that's what I thought. I was like, you just get off the however you got there, and it's like, whoa. Tractors. It was, it was definitely... Uh, um, it's like uh, those tumbleweeds in the street or yeah. something. I met people that's never met a black person a day in their life. Get out. That's really? That's how it's So they it's just different. looked at you yeah. like, what the fuck is yeah. this? Yeah. That's what it I picture. Even now, if I went to Idaho, it's quiet and like somebody's whistling like mm -hmm. a tumbleweed in their mouth. Yeah, like, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> open farm. I went from New York City streets to just open farmland and potato fields. And, and you went alone. Farms, and I went alone. <sighs> Brave. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. But I, Kudos to is, you, man. No, seriously. Serious. So I went out there, I played for a year. Um, transferred to Fordham, right here in the Bronx, and I played in Fordham uh, for a year before I entered the, entered the draft. So you left a year early yeah. from college, okay? Yeah. No, I, I left two years, three two years. years early, two years early. Okay, two years yeah, two years gonna, early. Okay, yeah. and then you came back to Fordham, in no, the Bronx. I, no, no, I, I no, left no. the college to altogether get drafted. to get drafted. Okay. So now, what year is this? This is 2002. Okay, it's 2002, and do you hire an agent at that point? or? Um, officially, unofficially, I, I hired an agent um, uh, while I was, while I entered the draft. And then do, yeah. does the agent say, you know, I expect you to go certain pick or something yeah. like that? so my agent, you know, was in contact with, you know, certain teams. Right. And uh, he was getting feedback from NBA teams and owners and GMs, and it was good feedback. Mm -hmm. And are you doing like tryouts? Yeah, it was like it was uh, it was um, tryouts for you. I, I tried out for at least twenty teams. Really? Wow. 20, 20 to twenty five teams that year. And what um, do they put you through? <clears throat> so let's just say there's 
five point guards that are in the NBA draft. And, you know, uh, the, the teams want to see all the point guards to see which one is the best. So mm-hmm. they'll bring them all in at the same time and work them out. Together. For, together. So for, 20, for about 20 to 25 of my workouts, I was seeing the same guys in the workout. And it's uh, who were the other like, guys? Huh? Who were the other guys? Exactly. <laughs> Nobody. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. If, are you... Are you uh, do you follow college basketball? Okay, so more pros, but uh, do you remember Juan Dixon? Yeah, from Maryland. Do you remember Dan Diggle from Gonzaga? Okay, um, Gonzaga. I love Gonzaga. Uh, oh, Gonzaga, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Who else was was the point guards? Uh, Frank Williams. I don't. I don't know what school he went to. It was, mm-hmm. it was about five of us. So, so you show up and. Like, what are you feeling emotionally? Are you feeling like I got this, or like, what Show am I? Show up to the workout to on the workouts. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no? okay. I'm, no, everybody there is nervous. Of okay, course, everyone's you know. nervous. But that's natural. Um, of course, once we get to the playing, all of those jitters for me go away. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for anybody else. Mm-hmm. But you know, it's a listen. This is a, a dream. This I want to get drafted. So there's there's about twenty coaches there watching. Us five players, and they're, and they're we're going head to head against each other to to be the best and to show that what to show that like we're one the on best. One on one or what? One on ones, two on two drills, okay. shooting drills, condition drills. You know, they they want to see how mentally tough you are, physically tough you are. Um, do you follow instructions well? They want to see all of that. They want to see your skills. Can you make a basket? Can you shoot threes? Can you shoot the mid range? Can you dribble? Um, your speed, all of that. What are some of the mental games of playing with you? Uh, so many. So many. So many. Um, yeah. I don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a blur. Is it's it a, more like they're screaming in your face, kind of like motivating no, you? No. No, or, no okay. they, don't, they don't do that in, in that in That setting. That setting. That okay. setting. Okay. That setting. Because it's more like they just want to see if you can, you know, how you how well you match up against your, your competition. So in that time when you're competing against the other prospects, mm-hmm. are you, I don't know, are you making friends with them? Are you trying friends. to, not friends? No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, like, are you kind of. That was a good question. I feel like, okay, no, in my defense, I have just watched a few training camp things Mm -hmm. on like football and i've he has me watching all this shit and they're talking to each other in practices and they're not teammates yet but they're kind of like oh where are you from like what school did you go to and they're kind of like chilling out so that's now so that must have been been totally different i'm from from brooklyn we don't (laughs) do that in brooklyn no (laughs) no so you're just looking at this other guy like you're are you from where are you from no i'm from upstate new york exactly that's why Listen, I New York City. No, New York City is about survival of the fittest. Yeah, well, I did learn that. Survival of the fittest. So okay. I'm not there to, you know, make friends with somebody else. Wow. That, you're my, you're my competition. So it's like, like it's either me or you. Right. Okay. It, listen, I want to play bad. I want to be able to, you know, make millions of dollars. I want to be able to, you know, um, provide for my family. And you're the person that might. It's in my way. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not. It's What's not your even Instagram? Like, where are you from? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's your Instagram? No. And, and and that's the difference. And we'll get to it. That's yeah. the difference uh, between basketball back when I played right, in the bat totally and, and the sports. Now, now everybody is they're friends. Oh, friends. Dude, I hate they're that. They're exchanging Everybody's jerseys. Friends. I say that all they're the like time. best yeah. friends. You, you, you watch a football game. The loser goes up to the winner, and they're See, both I don't like happy. That. Yeah. No. But yeah. I, yeah. I okay. So okay. so now what happens? Uh, yeah. You're you're in the NBA okay. draft. Okay. So yeah. So I'm. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm a modest person. I'm very humble. But when I tell you I'm washing these guys in these workouts, like it's, I'm head and shoulders better than these, everybody, these guards in the workouts. But, you know, the politics of basketball. You know, I don't know if you, under, if you guys ever no, heard explain. the politics of basketball. I went to Fordham University. Fordham is not known for their basketball program. Um, it's not like Duke. Or right. North Carolina yeah, yeah. or Yukon. Yeah. Or okay. Gonzaga. So or let's just yeah. say the business of basketball or the politics of basketball. Let's just say me, I have a twin. 
and we do exactly the same. We play exactly the same way. You have a no, no, no. no I'm saying hypothetical. Hypothetical. Oh, oh, okay, okay, hypothetical. Okay, okay. Let's <laughs> just say. Let's just say I have a twin. Okay. Yeah. And we play exactly the same. Yeah. Same stats, same style, same everything. But I went to Florida, and he he goes to Duke. The college coaches are going to go with Duke. the Duke player, then the Florida. Well, that that's so they have a reason in case they have to get fired for making the wrong decision. Uh, I don't I don't know about that. I just know that there's a uh, there's politics behind everything. There's a business of basketball, and you know Duke produces basketball. But that's a basketball program. You know what you're gonna get when a player comes from Duke. Right. You know, right. good coaching. Right. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. good, good right. coaching. You know, um, they play against you know tough, tough, tough competition. You know, so they give the upper hand to you know players who come from those you know those universities, those programs. Mm-hmm. So fast forward, I'm I'm killing these guys in workouts. Uh, get to the draft. Um, teams have already told my agent that. You know he's he's good. We we'll, we'll draft him, and let's just say long. I don't know what happened. There's stories that say you know my agent uh, said up. some yeah, or and there's some stories that say my college coach effed me. Really? Mm, wow. Yeah, so why would he do that? Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> don't need, I don't even want to go into that. Yeah. yeah because yeah. There's, yeah. there's a lot of he say she say. Yeah. yeah, yeah you know, yeah. for years I was saying you know I I told I've told people. That my college coach, you know, uh, f me, and then I hear that my agent f me. You know, it doesn't matter at this point. It's, it is what it, it, right. it is. It is yeah. what it is. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, I didn't get drafted. Let's just put it that way. How did that make you feel? Oh, it sucked. You know, I had my, I had my, all my family gathered in one place. You know, oh. we had, we had, we had a dinner, and uh, we watched a draft, and we were just prepared to hear my name, and and it didn't happen, and it was. It was heartbreaking. It definitely was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. How long did that sting? Um, it stung for about two, three days. Really, really bad. Mm. And but, then what? What do you do then? But, you know, um, we went right back to, you know, the drawing board. Listen, all right? You didn't get drafted. What are we going to do? You know, there's summer camp that you go to now. Um, you can, you know, there's summer NBA summer leagues. You can still, you're still able to make a team. You just have to do it the hard way. Yeah, you got to work yeah, harder. You have to work harder. So I was back in the back in the lab. Yes. Back yeah. Back in the lab. Yeah. Just back to the to square one, and you know, I worked I worked my tail off that summer. I played in uh, there's four NBA summer leagues. There was um, Orlando a league in, NBA league in Orlando, NBA league in Boston. NBA league in Utah and NBA summer league in LA, and I played in three out of the four. Wow! Yeah. So, so did this make you hungrier, and yeah. angry, yeah. And like yeah. fuck I, this? I'm gonna prove them wrong. Ch- I had a chip on my shoulder. Yeah, I had yes. something to prove. That's key. I had something to prove. I had a chip on my shoulder. It didn't matter who they put up against me. I was, I I was destroying. You were like, yeah, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, how did that um? turn into you playing into the NBA? So, I, uh, like I said, I played in f- three out of the four NBA summer leagues. Um, I played well all summer. Um, I get, I, now I get an invite to uh, NBA vet camp. This vet camp is the preseason before the NBA season. You know, I get invited to the Cleveland Cavaliers vet camp. You know, um, I think there's about 30 players that get invited. And um, maybe, let's just say... There's 15 players per team, per roster. Yep. Um, let's just say there's, for for sake of argument, there's nine guaranteed players that are signed for the year already. So that means right, that there's yeah. six open spots. Okay, six open spots. There's about 30 to 50 players who come in trying to trying to get that th- those six spots. Yeah. Six spots. Per team. Per, no, no. It, it gives that, that, that okay. number varies, but it there's, varies. Uh, there's okay. only 15 players per team. Per team, right. right. 15 players max per team. That's crazy. But then you have to be slotted into yeah. them needing the position you play. Yeah, exactly. The position you play, yeah. Right. So, yeah. So that's what we did. That's what we did. Me and my agent, we went over every single roster that year. And we was like, okay, 
we looked at the uh the teams. Okay, this team has get six guaranteed contracts already, but they already have two point guards, you know, in the, in guaranteed for the year. That might not be a good fit. This team has three guaranteed point guards. That's not gonna, a good fit. You know what? This one only has one. Now there's potentially two to three open slots for a point guard to be signed on this team, and that's what the Cleveland Cavaliers was. They had one guaranteed contract who was a point guard, and there was about three, two to three open uh, point guard spots. So we figured that was the best place for me to try to make the team. So that's why I chose the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers. That's amazing. That's exciting. Yeah. So yeah. like when you stole, yeah. fired up, you signed the contract for the NBA? <laughs> uh, here's the thing here's the thing so contracts are funny I had a non-guaranteed contract my rookie year non-guaranteed so they could cut you anytime anytime so I had a workers mentality every time I showed up to that's work that's like yeah I had I need to you know be on my A game the entire season because they could cut me whenever they wanted and this might sound weird but that's pretty much is that public knowledge like the whole team knows that so uh, they know that you're the one who has to prove themselves no. every day no okay. well you know what no I, i'm not gonna say it. i'm not gonna the guys probably the guys probably know yeah but it's not like just open open information knowledge. okay yeah. okay because i'm wondering if they kind of maybe would treat you different in practice knowing that you could be cut at any moment if that's something that is in the chemistry of the team in that sense. Interesting. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. I feel like that would yeah. be. Interesting. Who's your first coach? John Lucas. Ex-player, former player, John Lucas. And what'd you think of him? He's crazy. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, no, he's just, um, when I say crazy, he's just, uh, he's opposite of me. Just very high energy. High strung. Just everything is. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for some guys, that can make people feel uncomfortable when there's somebody on the sideline who's always nervous, always shaking, always moving. That's why I love playing for Phil Jackson, because Phil Jackson mm. had the same energy as me. That, so it's yeah, just like, your energy is extremely like No, you're very it's chill. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. So let, let's skip to Phil Jackson. So how did you wind up on the Lakers? Okay. Oh, th I just had a thought. No, but that's how I ended up on Miami. But no, how go I ended ahead. Up, go ahead. No, 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 no. <laughs> how I ended up on the Lakers. How did I end up on the Lakers? <laughs> um, so after my third year in the NBA, uh, second, excuse me, my second year, um, I, I played in the same season. I played for the Detroit Pistons and the Phoenix Suns. I was a free agent at the end of the year. And again, when you're a free agent, you have to go back to the drawing board. Okay. This team has X amount of players already guaranteed. This this roster has this. This roster has that. Okay, the Lakers have one point guard. Mm -hmm. You know what? My agent got on a um, on a uh, phone, called up the Lakers, said, you know, Smush is interested in you know playing for your NBA summer league team. So I, again, so I'm you a, had to try back, out. I had to try out yeah. again. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I had to try out again. So I'm playing on the NBA uh, Lakers NBA summer league team. I play well. They invite me to their vet camp. I decide to stay with them and, you know, try to make their team in vet camp. Again, I have to, you know, outwork another Shit. 20 to 30 players. And I wind up being the starter for the Lakers. So, as wait, a tryout, wait, wait, wait. As a so, tryout. So they sign you uh -huh. and you know you're going to be the starter or you had to beat, no. the, beat out the starter? <laughs> yeah, I was going <laughs> to ask. ask. Yo, Phil Jackson is a funny guy. Like he he might it might it's almost like uh, curb your enthusiasm funny, mm. so love that show. So when I'm the whole time I'm trying out for the Lakers, you know, do you know the vet camp? He called me everything but smush, smuck, no. smack, no. smooch, smack. Just a, just well, a fuck with he's you. a psychologist. No, that's yeah. just that's fucking totally brilliant. Yeah, you know, he never called me smush, never. Never. Do you think that was intentional? Of course it was. Of course it was. <laughs> of course it was. So he was pushing your yeah. right buttons yes. to get the most yeah. out of you. No, I, I want to say probably. I don't know. I don't. I don't know what his methods are. Maybe it was to get the best out of me. Yeah. Maybe it was. I had to earn his respect. But like, how did you react? I'm 
Listen, I don't care what that man called me. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to make this team. And he's Phil Jackson. Yeah, exactly. He won like seven but championships. But like the first time, you're like, "Oh, sir, sorry, my name is." No, no. no? Oh, no. I, I, I don't know. I feel like now today they would have been like, "You better call me." Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and those are the guys who don't make it. Oh, okay. Those are the guys okay. who don't make it. Wow. So, I'm working my tail off, working my tail off, working my tail off, working my tail off, and. I'm just there. Like I never got cut. They never told me I I made the team. They never told me I was a starter. First game of the season. Funny thing. First game of the season. He he never announced who the starters were. Never, you know, in preseason said this is the starting five. First game of the season. I'm still on the team. I'm like, I don't know if I made it. I'm still here. Okay, <laughs> I'm in the locker I'm, room. Yeah, I'm, 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 not gonna, I'm like sitting next yeah, to Kobe. Exactly. And, I'm, not, I'm not going to say nothing. I, maybe they forgot about me. I'm still here. I see my jersey with my name on it. Okay, I'm, I'm still here. Literally. Never never said who the start, starters were. He walks up to me 15 minutes before the game and said, Smush, get ready. You're starting tonight. Get the fuck oh out. Oh, my God. Wait, you lost your shit. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I never started any games in the preseason. Yeah. Never started any games in the in the, in the the uh, summer league. He walks up to me 15 minutes before tip-off. That's... Prepare yourself. You're starting tonight. So who and was the starting five? It was me, Kobe, Lamar Odom... Uh, I want to say Luke Walton and Kwame Brown. Holy shit, that company. Wait, wait, wait. You're on the court with Kobe and Odom. Yes, and I started for two seasons for the Lakers that night. As, as a tryout. As a, try, a tryout player. So now what? <laughs> and who are you playing? Where Are you in uh, L.A. or are you on the road? Uh, um, Do you I, remember? Yeah, I think our first game, our first game was in L.A. Definitely okay. So you're like in, in Los LA. Angeles, like literally on the court starting no right actually now. i'm lying first game was actually in denver okay, okay. so you're in denver yeah that and I, like, I remember so first game the, was in denver. the national anthem plays that they announce yeah. the starters and yeah. you hear and your hear name it, your, the correct name <laughs> the correct name <laughs> yeah, that, was a, that was the first time he actually called me smush right. the okay. first time he called me smush was that day hey smush he got my attention i'm like what? oh my goodness get out there you're starting <laughs> and that was it that's all he said to me what smush? did you feel like like, it took me by surprise because I was I was just I didn't know I, I didn't know what was going on I didn't know if I was on the team I, I just like I said I really felt like they forgot to cut me <laughs> <laughs> because I was just I was still there I was just I was just showing up yeah. I never got the call into the office saying you know uh, you you know we just need to let you go I just kept showing up and did you tell your family like I they might have no, forgot to have, cut me you're like no. no. Nothing. Mm-mm. They just turned the TV on, and there you were. Like, yeah, I didn't know. Smush yeah. is out there. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I never. I didn't have time to like prep them. Like, listen, I'm starting tonight. Oh, I'm the starting point guard for the Lakers. No one knew. Wow. What was that first game like? I mean, at this point, I was already in the NBA three seasons. Never as a starter, but. That first game, I you know I, I once I got out there it was basketball. Okay. It's the it's the initial you know Star Spangled Banner the the the, the you hear your name and then start a lineup. You walk out there for the first time and tip over. I'm like I never experienced this before. I'm right. looking around I'm like, <sighs> like it's a it's a it's a real rush. And then when the ball goes up and, the, and you're playing now it's okay now it's just basketball. Yeah. So I, I got into it real 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 uh real easy. But you know, it's that initial I've never experienced this before. <laughs> like my name in the starting line of walking out, you know, putting a powder on your hands and dapping everybody oh, up yeah. and you know, shaking the opposing team's hands as they line up to, you know, throw the ball up. Did you feel like you made it at that point? No. You were still hungry. Cause, yeah, of course. I was I still had a even at that time, I still had a non-guaranteed contract. Damn. If it was now, like Instagram, like, you would have been posting so, pictures in the locker so, room, like yeah, so exactly. Team. So this like, was this was before wow. social media. Yeah, before social this media. This was before social media. 2000, oh 2005. This was before like Instagram and Facebook. This was the MySpace days. Tumblr. Yeah. All that. Yeah. yeah. 
So now, now you're playing every day. Yeah. 82 games. But I, but I still have a non-guaranteed, non-guaranteed contract, contract. So they can cut me whenever they want. So right, right, right. I don't really feel like I'm in a, I'm just showing up. So at mm. no point in the year did they guarantee a contract? <laughs> so there is a, a, a deadline. Right. After January 15th. Okay. If you're still on the roster, your, your, your contract becomes guaranteed. And of so, course, it was January 15th and you didn't know. <laughs> no, 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 I did. I, that, that's when, that was the, those were the times when I would, if I was still on the team after January 15th, I'd be like. <sighs> that's the breathing room. Now, I'm, now I know I'm going to be here for the rest of the season. Yeah. But it's still like, you know, I still need to work. I still need to work. I still right. need to work. Well, um, what was it like playing with those um I mean, legendary teammates then. What was the chemistry like? Um, I play I play with a lot of legendary guys. So I'm going to go back to, I'm going to start with, well, there was nobody legendary on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, you know, knocking. It is what it is. But uh, when you start talking about, you know, when I played for the championship Detroit Pistons team, no. So you I didn't, you, no, the championship Detroit Pistons, I was on the team after the, the year uh, after they okay. won the chip. So okay. Chauncey Billups, Tayshaun no Prince, uh, Rip Hamilton, Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace, Derek Coleman, uh, Darwin Ham, who's now the L.A. Laker coach, uh, Lindsey uh-huh. Hunter. You know, everybody on that squad had at least 12 years under their belt in the NBA. They were all super vets. Were you intimidated playing with them? Of course I was. Of course I wasn't. You no, know, they was they was coached by the uh, legendary coach Larry Brown. Larry Brown. Who coached AI? Wow. Larry Brown. Yeah. I played for some legendary uh, coaches. But also. so hold on. So you're on the Detroit team, and yeah. are they like cool with you? Oh or? yeah, no. Those guys are super cool. Super cool. Right. There's no. Uh, there's nothing negative I can say about any of those guys on that team. And how no. about Larry Brown? Is he uh, cool, or he doesn't he, fuck with you know? No, no, he's, no, no. He he. He f- are we allowed to? Yeah, 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 yeah. whatever yeah. you want. He fucks with with the young guys. He's hard on his players, but he's a great guy. Mm-hmm. His the his, his coaching style is not who he is as a man. And um, no, it was it was hard for me to like really play for him because he's an over culture. He you you get hear even when you're watching the games on TV, you can hear him screaming from the sideline. You can hear him through the TV. Fucking stress. So me yeah, out. exactly. <laughs> so for literally. me, again, for me, I hate that because now it makes me a tense player, tense. and I'm not a tense person. Mm-hmm. Like right. when I, when if I have to do this, I'm no good. Yeah. And I'm like, you see, I'm very relaxed. I was yeah. a very fluid player, very athletic, very graceful. So I, you know, I, I did. I, I'm gonna say I didn't play well. Um, I had flashes. In Detroit, but I mean, I didn't get a lot of playing time because I was playing behind Chauncey Billups. Yeah, you know, they just won a championship. Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah, they just won, so they didn't really need me. No, I was like the the third string point guard. Right, right, right. So I have a question. Yeah. This is um a little off the track of the stats and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the environment like off the court outside of the gym? Are you are you hanging out with players or, or does everyone stay to themselves? Do you party? Do you go out to eat? Things like that. Well, it depends on what team you're on because everybody has a different nucleus of how they, you know, uh, operate. Uh, for the Detroit Pistons, you know, since we're on that team, um, you know, everybody has their own family. Everybody has a family, you know, wife, kids. Yeah. You know, they have their own family, but. There are times when they do come together outside of practice, so, you know, play cards, okay. or to go out and you know have a drink or two. Um, uh, everybody, I hope I don't get in trouble for this, but there were about six, seven, eight guys on Detroit that like to gamble. That's I mean, just leave it there. <laughs> we leave it there. Just leave it there. <laughs> leave then I also there. played for the Phoenix Suns. I played with Steve Nash. No way. Yeah. Amari Stoudemire. I, I love Amari. Yeah, he does. Um, he's, he's a New Yorker too. Yeah. Yeah, Amari's from. He New lives York? in New York. He lives okay, in New York. Okay, okay, yep. Uh, Maury Stoudemire. This was Sean Marion. Uh, this was uh, was it Rajah Bell that was there? Leonardo Barbosa. That uh, uh, coached by D'Antoni. D'Antoni. Oh, D'Antoni. and then he coached the yeah. Knicks after yes. that. Yeah. Yeah. So was was he uh, 
tough or no, he let you do no. whatever you want? He was, he was just one of those coaches that just let you play basketball. Do whatever you just want. Let just let it happen. Let <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, so, I kind of like that, though. It's like, just show up to the game. And yeah. do, what you're, do your you job. be yeah. drunk or not, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he was just a free coach. He, he didn't overcoach. He wasn't a screamer. He was just, you know, a free, free-flowing offense. Free-flowing offense. I have another interesting question. I um, only know about Phil Jackson from the recent, like, documentary. What was, like something a little off brand that he made the team do to sort of get in your head um it was a few things. the wrong name all the time there's a few things so i will say that he did um offer uh the team each player i guess he he knew each player's personality and he would give us a book to read Wow. He That's would give us a book to wow. read. Now, I don't remember the book he gave me. <laughs> I don't, Damn. And I don't even remember if I read it or not. <laughs> but he, he did. He, I, he, that was one of the things that he, uh, he uh, did, you know, that was kind of awkward that I'd never experienced from any other coach. And, and also in film sessions, um, he would actually have us, like, meditate. So that we would, so we would focus more on what was, you know, the information that was about to come t- to us. He he had us like just go into these Zen modes and you know just to clear our minds and just clear our spirit, so that whatever he was about to teach us, we would be open to, to receive, receive it. it. Do you yeah. think that that worked? Of course. Yeah. Of course. So out of all these amazing Hall of Fame coaches, who was the top for you? Phil Jackson, no question, no question. Wow question i gotta ask you because i feel like people are gonna want to know what was it like playing with kobe bryant uh we can come back to that question oh. <laughs> no 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 because i no because <laughs> no i i, I do want to touch on we were uh the, like, we were still on me the, the superstars i played with okay yeah. so i got to miami i also played with shaq no way yeah, play with with shaq. Play with oh shaq. my god play with shaq in miami Dude. play with Dwayne wade in miami get out yeah I played with Gary Payton in, no, in Miami. Okay. White Chocolate in Damn. Miami. Yeah. Um, Miami was like lit. Yeah, so loaded. what was it like playing with Shaq? Oh, he's the greatest guy. The absolute greatest teammate person you will ever meet in your life. Ever meet in your life. The coolest joking around. You won't meet a, a better person. Really? You won't meet a better person. Um, I love hearing that. I know. I'm a big it's Shaq good fan. Because, Look, yeah, we're really big Let me Shaq tell you fans. how great of a person Shaq is. And uh, so my two years after uh, L.A., I'm a free agent again. So back to the drawing board. Yeah. Damn. Um, I am in 4040, Jay-Z's uh, sports right bar, right you know, mm-hmm. watching yeah. a, a Roy Jones fight. I'm there by myself. Um, Shaq comes in. He's by himself. So, have you guys ever been to Forty Forty? Yeah. I have. So yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm in the upstairs in the VIP room by myself, just watching the fight. They know that we're NBA players, so they tell Shaq to go up there, smush it up there. So Shaq comes up there, and we're talking. It's just me and him in this big ass room. I'm sorry. <laughs> you can say <laughs> that. It's okay. Fine. It's okay. okay. Yeah, this yeah. this big room in the VIP room, just watching the fight, and we're talking. We're having Kobe jokes, of course. <laughs> All right. right, right. <laughs> and he's like, "Yo, so uh, where you playing next season?" I said, "Yo, I'm a free agent." Uh, this year he said hold on he makes a phone call right there on the spot makes a phone call nobody picks up he didn't get an answer the very next day I have a contract my agent has a contract from the Miami Heat guaranteed no, guaranteed two years <laughs> guaranteed <laughs> guaranteed two, se- two years this is my first guaranteed contract that's, he's a good guy that's a, that's a good guy Wow. But you're a good guy. And you're a good guy, yeah. You're a good guy. And he realized. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. he wouldn't do that for someone who's like, complete. And and of course, I had to to be a a good player player, also. Right, right, right. right, I'm I'm sure if I wasn't a good player, he would have never made that phone call. Totally. Totally. Right, right. But But, that's that's my Shaq, sir. Like, I I never met Shaq before. Never met him. That was the first time I ever met him in person. I played against him a few times. Yeah. Like, talking and interacting. First time, and he did that for me. Wouldn't you love to know what he said on that phone call? If you ever get the chance to find out, be like, what did you say on that phone call? He's yeah, like, that would yeah. that would that would be pretty cool. But that was yeah. my first guaranteed two two year contract. That's, that's an amazing story. Yeah. 
Do you yeah. uh, still talk to Shaq? No, nah, he's too. He's too. He's he's a bigger than life. He's, he's out there he's, now. He, you know, he's everywhere. He's, yeah, he's literally everywhere. He's everywhere. everywhere. He's, yeah. He just did a podcast like recently. He's everywhere. What is he not doing? He's DJing. He's and, like Snoop yeah. Dogg. Just yeah. That yeah. publicist works yeah. hard. Yeah. How was uh, how was it playing with Dwayne Wade? Oh man, he's uh he's almost he's he's like me. Just very quiet. Really? And really? Calm. Yeah. Really quiet. Yeah, he's a he's a quiet guy. I don't know why himself. I never got that from him. Watching. So what about Shaq? Is he like? Argh. No, he, Shaq is not. A, he's just a funny jokester. He's he's a comedian. He likes to have fun. He's lighthearted. Uh-huh. Yeah, I he's a big. Like he's he a big a kid. Yeah. yeah, he's a big kid. Even when he's angry at, let's just say he's angry at the coaches. Like he's having, he's joking around, joking around like just yeah. having a, a ball of fun. Oh my goodness! So then, who's the most intense player you played with? Intense. Oh, it's gotta be Kobe. Gotta be Kobe. Can you tell? Like he's the he's the total opposite than Shaq. I'll right. put it that. You know how I express how Shaq is? Yeah. Total opposite. So do you Total think that's opposite. why they didn't get along at the end of the day? Oh, more than like most likely, yeah. Cause Kobe is that <sighs> very Yeah. Rigid. He's a rigid kind of person. The way he's he like thinks. he's like perfectionist, yeah. very much so, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Shaq is fun, loosey goosey, I wanna joke, I wanna, you know, he he ha ha, I wanna laugh. I want to have fun. But at the end of the day, they both got it done. Yeah, in their own way. Yeah. You no, know, Shaq right. is the most dominant player in the history of the game of basketball. Totally. Right. This, I, I don't know this. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 I agree. but Shaq has also said if he had, you know, half of Kobe's work ethic, he could have, you know, been a lot more dominant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He could have yeah. been the number one. He could have been the world, the world's greatest basketball player ever. Wow, so he actually said he, that. I, I think I heard him say that. Yeah. Uh, Wow, he said that. Hmm. So, what do you, what do you think of Kobe? Hmm. Um. What do I think of him? He's uh. I will say he mastered his craft. Okay. He is a genius at his craft, and when I say genius. You know, geniuses at whatever they do, they're socially awkward. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're a genius at your craft, that means you have buried yourself in it so much that you don't even know how to relate to people. Yes. Because they they think differently. To, to get to that level, you have to think outside of what normal people think. So his mindset was a lot different than everybody. And I'm gonna just leave it like that. Yeah. That's cool. No, that, no, I'm, that's no. Yeah. He just he. It was a he, he was a. I enjoyed playing with him. I wouldn't be the smush parker you know today if it, if I didn't play alongside Kobe Bryant because mm-hmm. that's the first thing people say. Oh, you were Kobe Bryant's teammate. Or you were Kobe Bryant's this. Or you played for the Lakers because they know the Lakers because of Kobe Bryant. Um. But it was it was uh, it was a. Uh, it was a hard time, you know, to kind of relate to him. You know, he wasn't very open. Couldn't really talk to him. Yeah, like you said, like a little yeah. socially yeah, awkward. Yeah, yeah he was, he was awkward. Vibrating at but, another level. Yeah, but he was, he was, he proved he's a winner. Mm-hmm. So he would like never pull you aside and say, you know, maybe if you did this or that, or let's make, you know, do this play or that. Or no, the, on the court, he was very vocal about getting him the basketball. Okay, that's all that matters. Yeah, then. yeah. Right. You know, winning and, you know, what's best for the, you know, the team or him at, the, at that time. That's the, that's the most he's ever been vocal. Outside of basketball, just to himself. Mm-hmm. Were, were, uh, was he and uh, Phil Jackson tight? I don't know. I don't know what his relationships were with anybody else because you just never knew. He was just very untouchable. Yeah. You know, you, I, my relationship with him, I just, the only time I ever seen him was in practice or at the games. I didn't know what he was like off the court. Wow. Yeah. That's really interesting. That's just, it's interesting because he was like a franchise player. Yeah. So everyone. A oh, Hall of Famer. Yeah. yeah and yes. everyone knew, like, we would see commercials with, Co- like, so you just get an entirely different yeah. part of that person being in front of the camera, selling products and 
all over commercials, and then yeah. you're you know you're saying that he's yeah. socially awkward is completely not what I think most people knew about him. But yeah, I think well, I, I think everybody outside of you knows that he's socially awkward. Really? Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah did yeah. you think? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. No, he's. I mean, again, he he could possibly be, possibly have been about his <laughs> business. You know what? Once practice is over, I'm going to do this commercial. Once this commercial is over, I'm going to you know write yeah. this book. Okay, once this I'm done with this book, I'm going over here. Like he could have. That's what. I'm, uh, I'm sure he would, he he didn't have many distractions. Okay, yeah, he's not. It didn't seem like he had many distractions. Yeah. So let me ask you this: Do you think Shaq became a distraction for him, and he like forced him out of town? <clears throat> ah, you're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> no, that's a good question. You're gonna get me that's in a trouble. good question. <laughs> That's a because, speculation. Because, like, if, if, they, oh. if they didn't part ways, they would have won so many championships. I'm going to tell you like this. At the time that Kobe and Shaq split, Kobe did not want to share the limelight. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. just, just going yeah, you know, I mean, to yeah, be very... Everybody, everybody gonna, can feel that. Just yeah. going to be yeah. very blunt. Just everyone. Just be very yeah. open. Yeah, everyone. Kobe wanted to be the best player he wanted to be the best player in the world. He wanted to, he wanted to win MVP. He wanted to win scoring titles. And anybody who was on the team that was going to, you know, keep him from getting his shots to do that, he didn't want him around. Because mm-hmm. by that time, he had already, he had won three championships already with yeah. Shaq. Right. He already right. had the championship. Yeah, that right. was, yeah. Now is. Now it was all about solidifying who Kobe Bryant right. is well, in yeah. the history of the on, game. On his own. It, it, it's yeah. sort of like uh, Tom Brady and, and Bill Belichick. Belichick. Yeah, yeah. Splitting. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think I could get in trouble for saying that. Man. You can't. No, 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 people, no. everybody can Listen, Kobe up. fans, you know, are already going to go crazy with me they saying are, anything yeah. about Kobe. They are, yeah. This part of the show, we like to ask our guests some rapid fire questions. Uh oh. These are like Uh-oh. maybe like one or two sentence answers, pretty fast. Okay. And there's only there's only a few. What was your most memorable moment or game in your NBA career? I'm good. Well, how can I answer that? I wanted to. Uh, I mean, it's rapid what? fire. Okay, I'm gonna say the the playoff series against the Phoenix Suns. My steal against Steve Nash. Did you start against Steve Nash? Yes, I did. Fuck. <laughs> yes, I did. What challenges did you face during your NBA career, and how did you overcome them? Uh, I know that's a hard rapid fire, but well, the business of basketball ultimately took me out, and uh, how did I def- how did I defeat it? I left. <laughs> Mm. That's good. I, I, I left the NBA and went overseas. Okay, wait. I just have to ask. Why did you? Why did you do that? Okay, so the business of basketball. I I didn't know anything about the business business of basketball. I thought basketball was a sport. That's how I approached it. As a sport, it's supposed to be fun. If I if I work if I do this in practice every day and I'm the best player, I deserve the the most minutes. I deserve to get on that team. I deserve this contract. It wasn't like that. The business of basketball determines whether you make a team, get the shots, get the minutes. Exactly. That's like- so exactly. So it took the joy and the love out of the game for me. So I decided to leave the NBA because I, it wasn't fun anymore. And I went overseas where it was still a sport. That was fun. That was fun. Yeah, that, that was, was fun. Oh, listen, overseas I was the Kobe Bryant of the team. That's I awesome. was the Michael Jordan, the Allen Iverson. So Okay. And you were cool. And I was cool, yeah. And, and you were having was, fun. Yeah, and it was fun. I was yeah. traveling the world. I was seeing you no know, lands I've never even dreamt of uh, touching before and playing in front of fans that I never even thought, you know, watch basketball. Mm. And it was fun. Was there good camarad- camaraderie there? Yeah. With they, the teammates? They, 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 build a different, they build a different environment overseas than they do here in America. Here in America, basketball is more, is more individual. You know, they, they teach you. You're, you're a professional. You come to practice, you work out, you practice, you train, then you go home and you have your own life. Just chill out. Overseas, yeah. you do everything as a team. You eat as a team. You travel as a team. You practice as a team. 
you eat some more as a team. So it's more team oriented. Mm-hmm. Club. It's more of a club, you know, oriented than a business. Uh, than a, a GM owning a team. Okay. Yeah, that yeah, that's more, it's like a family. Yeah, it's family, a family. I was gonna say yeah, family. family. Yeah. Um, next question. Yeah. How has the game changed since you've played? Drastically. It's a lot softer. Um, softer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot, <laughs> lot softer. Uh, a lot more threes. Um, uh, it's a pos- po- positionless basketball game now. What does that mean? So when I played, there was a point guard, there was a shooting guard, there was a small forward, power forward, center. Now everybody's a point guard, everybody's a shooting guard, everybody's a small forward. There's no true centers. There's no true power forward. There's no true small forward. There's no true shooting guard. There's no true point guard. Everybody is just one through four can play all five positions. Well, you got Luca, seven foot guy shooting yeah. three pointers. Yeah, he's playing point so guard. Like, yeah, it's positionless. Like it's, there's no it just true position. Really no. Huh. No, because now everybody's playing small basketball. You can put five, four guards out there and one big. No. So does that make it more of a selfish kind of game? All they're playing, it's just like give me the ball, like. That, it's, it's more one on one style. One on one. More open court styles. If I get it now, it's my turn to go. Yeah, it's different now. Yeah, it's that, soft. It's soft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I can feel that. Do you feel that the referees get too involved in the game today? No, not at all. The game needs the referees. Because if we let the players just play, it would get so out of control. It would be like, like players tough. Are, players don't understand how important referees are. I feel but like the referees get too involved. You don't think there's too many foul calls? and? Oh, no. I, I, I do. I do. I do believe that there might be a lot, a lot of foul calls now. But at the same time... If we just let these, you know, guys just run around and, you know, play the game like there's no law, it would get out of control. Mm-hmm. Like these young guys are already out of control. They don't, mm-hmm. they don't know how to control their bodies. In terms of injury and, or in terms of competitiveness? And, they don't, they the- don't know how to control, their, you know, like driving to the basket, you know, being balanced or, you know, just not knocking people over. Okay, yeah. You know, they, they, don't, they don't know how to control their emotions. You see them, you know, arguing calls all the time. Yeah. yeah. So it's like walking on the sidewalk in New York City every day. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next question. What do you miss most about playing in the NBA? The competition. So, you know, as, I, as we walk through this, you know, this, this uh, my journey, you know, at every level, every year, I had to work my way onto a team. It wasn't until I got to Miami yeah. that I had a guaranteed two years. So I had to go in every day and fight and beat out tens and twenties and thirties of players for a spot. So I had to find a way to be the best. And that was what did it for me. Finding a way to be the better player than the next guy. Be the best athlete than the next guy. That's what I miss. Oh, what a war. Yeah. Hard, that's, man. Yeah, that's hard, like, man. yeah. Next question. Are there any regrets or things you would have done differently in your NBA career? So I don't live with regrets. Um, if I would if there were things that I could have done differently, I might have taken my, my time, my relationship in LA with Kobe Bryant differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and I say that to say I played well. We played well together. We had a good chemistry on the court. And just because I didn't enjoy or like particularly the person he was off the court, I let it affect what we did on the court. Mm. Was it because, like, you didn't kiss his ass? <laughs> y- y- y'all know what that means? I know. Okay. I know. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why. Um, I got it. Are there any current NBA players that you enjoy watching today? Good question. I like, you know, I enjoy watching Kevin Durant. I like KD a lot. I like uh, Stephen Curry. Um, 
I like watching guys like Damian Lillard and Giannis. Um, Kyrie. I like watching mm-hmm. Kyrie. Kyrie is a very skillful player. Very energetic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and then there's, a, there's some other guys, but those are like the top of the guys. Those are your main. Yeah. main. Yeah. Um, what are some of the biggest misconceptions or stereotypes about players in the NBA that you'd like to debunk? I can't debunk any of them. <laughs> They're all true. They're all true. <laughs> <laughs> no, all but true. NBA players are known for partiers, but you don't party. Yeah, and I you don't never party. did. So and you I, never did. Yeah. So, yeah. That's I never, a debunk. So, no, because there are a lot of NBA players that actually do party. It's just me. Right, was, that's what I'm saying. So the stereotype uh, yeah. is true is right. what yeah, you're saying, but you are the true. exception to yeah. the stereotype. Yeah. yeah. I never got into a party. I never, I never drank. I never smoked. That's good for you. Don't start now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You have any, like, guys that would go out and party a lot and, you know. But listen, I'm, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, no. Not, no, I'm, not, I'm not going to name any names, but right. you know, there are guys who actually go to practice straight from the club or – to the game straight yeah. from the club yeah or play a game like just straight from partying like drinking and that, that's how they play that's how they play wow. better wow and were these like star players yeah wow wow yeah oh I, I, you hear a lot like in the nba like the stars would have a handler and they'd see like a hot chick mm-hmm. in one of the rows and they'd be like bring her and does that happen? They bring her back yeah. to the locker room. Really? Not to the locker room, but that's like okay. Really so, cool. so, so, so <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, that's in, that's classified information. Yeah. <laughs> that's classified. I don't know where you get your team. <laughs> um, no, but the first time I was privy to that, I was a Laker and I was on a bench. You know, one of the, you know few times I I was actually sitting on a bench, and uh, <laughs> like how I did that again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. Players, when you're sitting on a bench, you can actually see who's sitting up in the stands. Like you, you, you're paying attention to the game, but you're like oh, also scouting. Out. You're looking, and then if you see somebody, and you make eye contact. Then you can send a ball boy up. You'd be like, "Listen, the ball, get the ball, out. the ball." You'd be like, you'd call a ball boy over. Be like, "There's a chick sitting, you know, about twelve rows up, six, six seats in, you know." You no, know, get get a number for me, and he'll go get up. He go up and say, you know, X, Y, and Z. You know, want your number, and they'll come back with the number. But really? like, did she like say hi to you or something, or just you no, look at her? Eye contact. Eye contact. And, yeah. and what if you say the twelfth row, and he goes to the thirteenth, and this is big aunt. This big, but then nah, he gets nah, nah. We're very descriptive. <laughs> we're just, nah, 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 no, nah, he's nah, like nah. she's wearing a yellow yeah, shirt. Yeah, right. yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Final question. Yeah. Final question. Any advice for any? young player out there who wants to make it to the NBA, what would you tell them? The biggest thing is understanding that basketball here in America is a business. It's a business. Get your mind wrapped around that right now. Because, you know, they teach, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to be real honest right now, they teach little black boys that basketball is a sport. Oh. They might teach that it's a it's a business. It's a business, and that's why you see them, you know, thinking about owning and becoming GMs and coaching, like because they understand business. There are other avenues. If the basketball, the sport doesn't work out, they're thinking, okay, I could so do something else other than just playing basketball. And then the the players, you know, are their careers shorter then? Yeah, because to them it's a sport. It's a and sport. It's a business. So, I would say it's a business. It's a job. It's mm-hmm. like any other job. I wasn't approaching the game of basketball like it was a job. So when it became a job, it became not fun. And I'm, I would tell that to any. I, t- I tell this to, whenever I talk to you know kids, you no know, podcast interview, um, my inspirational speaking, which I do, I tell them, listen, get your mind wrapped around. It's not a sport. It's a business treated like such so that they're prepared Mm -hmm. that when the business side of basketball happens they're not you know uh blindsided like i was can i ask a question does that mean hiring the right people to be around you Uh, does that okay so let me give you one aspect of the business 
Okay, so I told you, um, I, I, I mentioned if, if I'm like, they teach us from young, if you're the best player in practice, if you come to the gym early, you practice, you work out, you're the best shooter, you're going to get the most shots on your team. If you practice and you work hard and you're the best player in the gym, you're going to get the playing time. The business side of it is when you get up to the NBA, okay, this guy went to Duke. This guy went to Fordham. This guy's going to get the opportunity to, because he went to a higher, a better university. Mm. Or, or I'm going to take it one step further. Let's just say the Brooklyn Nets want to sign Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's playing at OKC. He's a free agent. But the Brooklyn Nets want to sign him. The business now. The Brooklyn Nets want KD. They contact their agent. Now the agent is like, okay, we'll give you KG. I mean, KD. KD. But you also got to sign this other guy under my agency also. Oh, shit. And now what that does is this, there might be somebody on the Brooklyn Nets who actually worked their tail off to get there, but to make room for they that get, other guy, it, he no. goes. The business, that's the business. So I could I could have That's fucked up. I could have been working my tail off all summer and earned a spot on Brooklyn. But because they want KD and now they got to create a new spot for KD and this other guy, then you got to cut somebody. That's Wow, that's the business. That's the business of basketball. You could be doing everything right. I honestly would go overseas too. That's wow. wild. Wow. Damn. And they obviously don't explain it that way when it happens to of the course, player yeah. that gets cut. They're just like, you didn't um, of, hit your numbers. Of course, the last yeah. three games, you got to go. Yeah, and, but and I mean, you can see it. You can see it clear. You can see it clear as day today. Right. Look at the Milwaukee Bucks. All three of. Uh, all two of Giannis's brothers are assigned to Milwaukee. Right. Why yeah. Do you, right. Right. Shit, you told me that. Yeah. So your biggest piece of advice would be learn the business of basketball. Learn the business and understand it's a business, so that when it de- when that happens, you understand it and you don't give up. You don't let it break your spirit. Yeah. You be- just keep. You just keep. You know what? I understand it's a business. And you know what? I'm going to go to the next team and keep fighting because you know you're good enough to play. For me, I walked away from the game here in, in America to go overseas. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't regret it. Like, I've, I have a, a massive you know, uh, 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 experience yeah. that I experienced overseas playing over for 11 years. But I could have been playing in the NBA for 11 years. All right. So do you, do you years. feel your spirit was broken in America because yeah. of the business? Oh, yeah. The so game, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was just like, you know what? I'm I'm done with this BS. Yeah, it blindsides you then. I'm the done, way, like, because yeah. at, at at some point I'm like, okay, I proved I'm good enough. I was the starter for the Lakers. Why do I have to go back to this, having to try to make a team? You know? Yeah. Wow. Well, the last question that we asked our guests okay. is it's a two part question. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive. And have the contact list of anyone dead or dead or alive in any time of history. Who would that be? Dinner, dinner, and, and contact list. Contact. Yeah, two, it could be could two be, different people. It could be the same person. Dinner and contacts. Dead or alive. Mm-hmm. I mean, I already met Michael Jordan. Damn. I already, you know, broke bread with him, you know, had dinner with him before. Uh, so that's already in the bucket. <laughs> 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 um, and was MJ amazing? Huh? Was MJ amazing? Oh, yeah. No, he's, he's, uh, he's personable. He's, he's personable. Right. Like when I first met MJ, he came up, you know, you know, grab me by my shoulders, you know, it was like, like cut, yeah, yeah like, like that, yeah. Nice to meet you, yeah. you know, welcome, and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, that's fucking amazing. And this is Mike. Like, I grew up watching right, Mike. I told right. him I'm, I'm a Chicago Bulls right. fan right. all my I life. I would just not speak. I would just stand there. It'd be completely awkward. Um, I always, 
It might be weird, but I always wanted to meet Michael Jackson. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I hey, always, hey. I love Michael Jackson. <laughs> I always wanted to meet Michael Jackson. Yeah. That would have been a good thing. Hey, he would have good contacts as well. I was going well. to say, <laughs> yeah, yeah. his phone. <laughs> I, yeah. But, in, of course, I was going to say, I, I also pl- played for Jay-Z's team uh, in the summertime here, okay. you know, a few times. So I met him, broke bread with him a lot. Was he cool? Yeah, he's a cool dude. Nice. He's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. Okay, good to hear. He's very New York. Just you know, yeah, very, yeah, like, yeah. So yeah, you guys could yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn. Dead or alive? That's a tough question. I've never had that asked mm-hmm. before. I'm. I mean, I, I'm gonna say Michael Jackson, but For he dinner? got. It, I don't know if I want to sit down and have <laughs> dinner with Michael Jackson though. Oh, I would. I would. <laughs> I mean. Maybe he'll he do got, the he moonwalk got, coming he got, in. He got a little weird towards the end. He got fucking yeah. weird. He got a little weird. I'm, I'm sorry. Lot, he got a, a little, lot weird. A lot weird. I, he got... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> I don't want. I'm not. I don't want to be. I can't say what yeah. I want to say. Yeah, me neither. The dinner yeah. would have been fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know if I like. I said I, w- I wanted to meet him. I sit down and have dinner with him. No, I don't know about having dinner. How about lunch? Lunch. You can do lunch with Michael. He's Jackson. like, let's have brunch. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what? You know what? No, I got. Yeah. I want to sit down and have dinner with. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why. All my all my thoughts with the guys. I want to have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sit down and have dinner with Sanaa Lathan. I knew you were going to say that for know. some reason. Sanaa Lathan. Do you know who that is? No. Jeez. You don't know who Sanaa Lathan is? I don't oh, even know where man. to start with that. I Love and Basketball? I know basketball. Love, Love and basketball, basketball, the movie. Oh, no. Brown Sugar? Okay, He's an actor. We watched, She's an actor. <laughs> She's an actor. Yeah, yeah but we watched the Actress. show. He, you would probably just remember from like the show, The Affair, the last season. He was dating I, her. I know, she, I know sports. I don't know no. actors or actresses. I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, no, I would have right. dinner with her, too. Yeah, I would have no, dinner with I, her, too. If I, if I had an opportunity... I was yeah, I'm, say, married. I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. <laughs> but she, she, but no, but she, she knows. She, she knows that that's my, that's my crush. That's true. That's, that's my Hollywood. Yeah, he has one too. She's a Victoria's Secret model. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. We're just gonna. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so contact phoneless. Who would it be, dead or alive? Well, anybody who has gonna, her we, in her in, just, in her phone. Yeah, yeah, Open yeah, Google. Yeah. Let me just Google Sonali, and it's fine. While you think of your question, because I don't know what's wrong with him, I probably could be shooting myself in the foot here. But I'll Google while you think of your answer. Okay. I mean, I would. I mean, contact list. I'm gonna I'm, I'm go with Jay Z. Yes. I would go. With, he got. He has. He has Barack Obama <laughs> oh, on speed dial. He's like, oh, I know her. <laughs> you Good have Jay Z's contact list. Yeah, he has Barack Obama on speed. Yeah, for real. That's who I want to. I want to meet. You want to have dinner with Barack Obama? Yeah. 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 Well, so not Lathan first. Yeah. <laughs> if I had a choice, <laughs> if I had to flip, if I had a choice, and I'm married now, I, I, I'd go with the safe bet, Barack Obama. He I'm would probably now. say that too, Barack Obama. He's I'm, like, I'm, I'm gonna have dinner with Sanaa Lathan. I'm, 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 I'm married now. I can't, I can't choose. She can't be my number one. He's choice. like, we'll call Jay Z and play Michael Jackson while we're oh, having wow. dinner. There's a lot yeah. going and then it's on. A now. Full circle. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on to our show. We Claire. have a gift. Yes. We do. We have a gift for oh. you. Open. Thank you. Should I open it on Christmas? Or do I open, open it, it right now? Today right is now. Christmas. <laughs> All right. Every day is Christmas at Play Hard. I was like, adult. wait, is it Christmas? I'm like, no. I thought I was. Oh. You have two gifts. This I is, love. This is dope. That's yeah. nice. That's nice. This is cute. That's one of my. Yeah, you go right okay. ahead. There you we do go. The honors, you you do don't the mind. Honors, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Yeah. oh yeah! Oh yeah! Nice. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! And what is that? The moss agate. There we yeah. go. Oh yeah! These are nice. That's hot. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. I love that. Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. It was so much Thank fun. You. Thanks for Thank having me. Thank you guys for listening to the Play Hard Look Dope podcast. We will see you next time. Peace. Peace.